Hello, Relief Hub people. An update from the Relief Hub. Dee, 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 dee. I came home to this. Pretty, pretty flowers. I'm special. <laughs> Thank you to my secret admirer. <laughs> Not so secret. Um, today we almost got a mistrial. Yeah, apparently uh, the prosecutor said, uh, said something he wasn't supposed to say, even though we argued for hours on the topic days ago, and we lost. <laughs> so he tried pulling a fast one and revealing some information that he agreed that he wasn't going to reveal. So it's kind of weird how this is all playing out because of the MMMA and whatnot. You know, it's, the attorneys are stumbling over their words because you're just so used to talking about the MMMA and its laws and how you follow them and do this and that. And the other thing, uh, we finished interviewing Detective John Steffes after my attorney had a very, very loud debate that you could hear on four floors. Um, <laughs> Kicked my fibromyalgia in, that's for sure. Had me all nervous. Um, but we got it all resolved, and everybody's happy. Um, except I don't think the judge was too happy being called a kangaroo court, but we'll get over it. Um, or being the prosecutor getting called a booby in Yiddish. You're funny, Michael. <laughs> well, at least he knows how to lighten the mood. Um, it was pretty boring, actually. I, I was kind of watching the jury and making sure they weren't falling asleep on us. But we showed a bunch of pictures, and a lot of pictures are being kept out for various reasons that I can't go into. And I don't know. It just feels like another day at work, really. It's not like I'm nervous, and I'm holding up just fine. I imagine the last day when the jury makes their verdict, I'll have a panic attack or two or three. But other than that, it's just like another day at work, you know. I'm here to defend and here to help people. If other people need um, referrals, still, I'm still doing referrals in my paralegal work, like always. Um, so if there's anything anybody needs, let me know. I'll turn them on to the right attorney in the right place at the right time. Um, let's see. Tomorrow there's going to be some more witnesses. I've seen some three more suits out in the hallway. <laughs> detectives in their suits too funny usually you see them in in uh riot gear <laughs> and they come in all dressed up all snazzy in suits it's like whoa didn't recognize you <laughs> but um detective john stuffus was pretty nice i mean he answered pretty truthfully i mean it was obvious that law enforcement isn't in cahoots with the prosecutor as much as i thought but the prosecutor is more in cahoots with the judge is how it appears. So there's a disconnect there and they don't seem as organized as I had hoped to see them. Geez, maybe there's a job there for me to help educate them on how to do that. <laughs> Not. <laughs> yes, I'm having a better day today. Um, tomorrow, back at it, 9 a.m. Um, probably have a full day tomorrow. Friday, they're talking about a half day. Um, my attorneys still have to go home and see their families. They've been here all week, so doing a damn good job too, wives. <laughs> so just to keep you updated on what's going on, um, kind of look forward to seeing some people that they're calling in. I haven't seen them in a year. Um, I miss them very much. You know who you are. Um, What's new? What else is new? I got a lot of new things going on, but I'm not sharing it with the public, so. Anyway, I am going to let you go and plan on seeing you tomorrow. And Sherry Roberts, oh my gosh, she's there every day to watch my court case with her MS. The woman is so in such pain she can barely move, and she still comes. I gave her my butt cushion pillow today so she could relax a little more, but... That's just so cool. They got to witness the event, <laughs> the almost mistrial. <laughs> but there's a few things going on that I'm very, very excited about um, what will be revealed. Um, I can see my attorneys setting them up. I mean, he's got stuff worked up that once this is done and over with, um, yeah. Anyway, I mailed out the avertments today. So those 15, actually I mailed out 29 avertments today. 
criminal avertments, putting a bunch of people on notice um, that what they did is not going to be tolerated. And if they don't go out of their way to rec rectify the situation, I will bring criminal charges against them all. It's kind of the contractual way of doing things under the UCC. So I am playing that card and I will take it from there. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it was just a little easier to do avertments, put everybody on notice at the same time than having a different contract, or I mean a different case file for every person that I'm going after because of all this. The damage is just amazing. Um, it goes into my families, it goes into my friends, goes into the communities. Um, you know, you gotta keep people out of work to have them come to court and testify, you know? That's just ridiculous. What a waste of, of money, of um, taxpayers' money, this whole case. They had to spend more than anything anybody's ever made just to do this case to come after me. And they keep saying, they keep saying, well, we're not going after the people that were selling the marijuana. We want to know who's the ringleader. And what did John Steffa say? Well, if I was going after Meyer, I'd go after the owner of Meyer. I wouldn't go after the cashier. So that's pretty much his input as the lead detective on his first racketeering case. Um, what else went on today? Um, I don't know. It's just pretty much presenting a lot of the evidence on the overhead projector so that the jury can be caught up to speed with some visuals. That's pretty much it. It's going to be hard. I mean, how do you educate 14 people on years of stuff you've done in that short period of time, you know, four or five hours a day? It's like, uh, you know, the system's broken. It's very broken. Why couldn't they just let us go up there and tell our stories? Everybody come up and tell your stories, and then we'll come back and do a debate thing. I don't know. There's got to be a better way. This whole court system's not right anymore. It's not kept up to um, t the current times. Um, I got accused of recording something today. I have my phone hooked into my laptop so that I get Wi-Fi without using the court's Wi-Fi. We won't go there again tapping into my shit. How dare you? Um, and somebody said they thought I was recording. Well, no, I wasn't recording. And then we had to uh, bring it to the court's attention that one of the officers that was sitting in the courtroom watching everything was also outside talking with the witnesses that were waiting to be called up, which he wasn't supposed to be doing, but he testified that he's been at this for 25 years or whatever, and he knows better than not to talk to about the right things. And Oh, one of the jurors said the smell of marijuana is bothering them. Well, the marijuana was sitting in a box under their noses. Duh, I was wondering if anybody was going to say anything about that. So they took it out of the room. They, the smell of the marijuana bothered them. Well, we know we lost one person on the jury. <laughs> Oops. Well, that's the prosecutor's fault. I mean, the marijuana, as far as I know, was in some airtight sealed jars, and they chose to dump them all in a paper bag. So, you know, that's their problem. I bet you they're moldy and lightweight and whatnot, but I want it back. <laughs> Give it back to all of us people in Plainfield Township. It's not theirs. It's the whole community. So um, my attorney hasn't told me whether or not I'm going to testify. He has talked to the jury a few times to see if they were okay with that or if they would use it against me. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but um, when they had their opening arguments, my attorney asked the jury, um, would you support medical marijuana? And almost all of them, if not all of them, raise their hands. <laughs> That's pretty cool because there once was a time when you'd be lucky if you had one juror raise their hands and be like, yay, somebody's on the jury panel that recognizes marijuana. So we got a lot of hands that went up. Um, they haven't seen the whole picture yet. It's pretty piecemealed right now. We're still putting the puzzle together for the jury. There's just, you got to do it in small increments and within the law and we can't talk about the MMMA so we're all stumbling over our words. I'm pretty active in what's going on as far as funneling documents to Michael as he's talking and yeah I'm interactive with all that. Um, I do have 
two attorneys that are helping me in this case. Um, Michael's the lead, of course. And then uh, some people, other people that are watching the case on our behalf and filling us in on what we thought we might do or missed or whatever. Um, I, I can't believe anybody would convict me of racketeering, really. <laughs> All the people I've helped over the years, it's like, well, no, I'm not a racketeer, sorry. Like like Michael said, she may be organized, but she's not a racketeer. <laughs> you got that right. I'm well organized. I know where all the paperwork goes and where it's supposed to be. But I'm just rambling on and probably boring the hell out of you. My eyes are tired. Um, and I've got more to say, but I, I think I'll give it a day or two until time passes before I say it because I don't want it to affect the case tomorrow. But anyway, I will talk to you soon, and you have a good evening. Bye.